All right, let's talk about the uh, NFL passing leader right now, Tua, who, you know, I mean, listen, the numbers are insane. He played great in this game. He, okay, sure, he had the two turnovers. One of them wasn't really his fault. Uh, the other one was a little rough, but still, uh, you know, as a whole, I thought he was really good in this game. And here's kind of, I think, what's exciting about Tua in general. So we're going to start off with this play that you see on the screen, and we're going to kind of talk about why I think this Dolphins offense, I don't think this was a fluky performance. I think that this is something that's going to continue really due to, uh, you know, schematically how they can just drive you crazy. But first, I just want to talk about Jalen Waddle himself and how he can torture defenses. Where, so he's going to fake as though he's doing this, which is kind of just get into a gap in coverage uh, kind of in that, you know, middle area of the field. Once Tua takes the snap, he's going to look in that direction. And, you know, Baltimore is expecting him to sort of sit down right there. And I think they're mindset is probably, hey, second and 13, if they're going to throw for five yards right here with Waddle, we're okay with that. That's a win for us. We'll take that, give a third and eight. Sure, sounds good. But then watch how when Waddle moves. I mean, he can, he moves so well. I mean, he's able to not only make that catch at the posit right here just for copyright reasons, but he's going to pick up a ton of yards after the catch. He has game-breaking ability. That's really the only guy I can really think of that's similar is Tyreek Hill. So because of this and because of Tyreek kill teams don't want to just you know give you an opportunity to hit the ball deep down the field they're not going to play single safety deep very often the issue with that is that that can set up what Tua is great at something like this where it's going to be zone coverage and you have multiple receivers running over the middle kind of the first one can hopefully clear out uh the, the Baltimore corner the second one then can potentially get into a gap in coverage on third down and two and it's these types of plays that Tua is fantastic at it's kind of what the Shanahan scheme is built around Mike McDaniel you know it's a very similar scheme that he's doing and watch how when this play begins you're going to see how there is a gap that you know it's not a huge window but there is a window that a receiver can eventually run through and these are the things that again this is what uh Tua is fantastic at it helps that Tyreek Hill is the receiver but Tua was great at this before Hill got there and the fact that you now kind of are forcing teams to play a scheme that Tua is great against is just a incredible uh, mismatch and it's either you play where you hope that you can cover uh, Hill one on one, which I would not try to do, or you know, you I mean, you also have to try to deal with Waddle on the other side, or you play this, but then Tua can do what you're about to see. Tua is going to time this up perfectly, and they're able to get the first down. And I mean, listen, uh, that's great stuff from Tua. I don't think there's any denying that that's great stuff from Tua. It's kind of one of those uh, situations where this stuff isn't as sexy as the, you know, throwing the ball 60 yards down the field off platform type of stuff, but there's still a ton of value in being able to run on script plays and Tua's on script numbers are as good as anyone's in football. It's his off script stuff, you know, last year, those numbers weren't great. A lot of theories as to why that is. Is it just because he's not good at it? Is it the offensive line? But, you know, for this on script stuff, he's always been great and he's in a situation now where the on-script stuff works a lot more. Going over to this play now, where it's going to be a zone coverage play, and you're going to have the uh, number two receiver run a clear-out route for Jalen Waddle. And this is another example of this kind of this is a little bit different because it's not Tua being great necessarily, but it's the Dolphins offense being great and showing how, you know, th the Ravens are respecting the speed that Miami has so much that when Tua takes the snap and he is going to eventually throw the ball towards Jalen Waddle. I mean, look at how open Waddle was because of how far off Baltimore was playing because they are respecting, you know, someone, you know, uh, like a Jalen Waddle. You're not going to get burned deep. And because of that, you're still giving up a huge chunk play right here. So again, the Tua haters will say, ah, Jalen Waddle was wide open. Sure, but at the same time, like, yes, okay, some of this insane stat line was because of the, you know, Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill of it all. Of course that's the case. You can't have a game like this without having other guys contribute. Yes, other guys contributed, of course. Waddle uh, is going to then pick up more yards. So, again, really good stuff from Waddle. And, hey, listen, Tua's still running the offense. That's what you want to see. But uh, this offense as a whole, just, you know, lethal right now. Going over here now, that last play helped set up the touchdown to bring them within two touchdowns. This one will be the touchdown to bring them within one touchdown. It's a third down and 10 right here. So big play and watch what happens. Tua is going to take the snap. Tua is going to look towards his right and make this throw. Uh, sitting at about, you know, about his 44 yard line or so. He's going to be throwing this one to about the, the four yard line. So, okay, 
decent amount of yards he's throwing the ball here. I'm very interested in seeing what happens once we see the All-22 footage. We didn't get a great look at this play from what I saw, uh, but you see Tyreek Hill is past Marcus Peters and Kyle Hamilton on this one, so good stuff by him on this third down and 10. Because of that, he is able to come back to the ball, make the catch, and get into the end zone for touchdowns. So really good stuff from Tyreek Hill to be able to do all of that. And quite frankly, uh, I have to say, uh, I think you are officially not fun if you're watching this play and saying, uh, oh, well, he Tua underthrew it a little bit. Like, okay, fine. Yes, I guess he technically did underthrow it a little bit. I'm okay with that. He got the touchdown to the wide open Tyreek Hill. Uh, and usually, it's if you overthrow it, you don't feel bad about it because then it's just incomplete. But with Tyreek Hill, it's almost like underthrow it a little bit because he's going to be so open, you want to make sure you hit it. I don't know. Uh, he made a completion, uh, long touchdown on third down and 10. I'm not going to nitpick this one too much. It was a great throw. This one, the uh, game tying touchdown, I mean, this was just a blown coverage. You still have to give credit for Tua for noticing it and give credit to Hill for taking advantage of it, but it was a blown coverage. Watch how when it begins, Tua looks up, and I just don't know what this defensive back was doing here. I, he, I, he just he got screwed up. Something went wrong. He thought he had safety help behind him, but there wasn't even a safety lined up behind him, so I don't get how he messed this up, but again, give credit to Miami for noticing it. Tua does make this throw. Tyreek Hill is able to make the grab, and they are able to get into the end zone for a touchdown. So again, some people will say this is taking away, you know, taking away from Tua's uh, great stat line. I really don't think it is. Again, it's not possible, I don't think, to have a 469-yard six touchdown performance without having a blown coverage or a great wide receiver play in there. Like that's going to happen. I thought Tua was really good. This play was, you know, maybe his best one, which was the game winner. It's man coverage. And so Jalen Waddle is going to be a good matchup right here because he's tough to cover against man coverage especially when he's going up against Jalen Amar Davis, which is a, it's a mismatch. I mean, this guy has, uh, you know, he's a, he was a fourth round selection in the most previous draft. He had just three snaps in the first game. So now you're bringing him on uh, to cover Jalen Waddle in this spot. That's a really a tough spot. I, I don't like that in this goal line situation. I don't know what really uh, they're thinking right here. However, you're going to see Jalen Waddle is going to eventually get really wide open. Tua had to bide some time there, though. It was not an immediate uh, getting open play. So this is one of those where the pass rush could get there. Maybe there would be trouble. But, uh, you know, a three-man rush certainly helped. And Tua navigated the pocket as well, which helped. You see Waddle open. Tua makes a good off-balance throw. They're able to get the touchdown. They're able to win the game. Just a remarkable performance. A lot of great stuff. And I think this Miami Dolphins offense, I don't think it's a fluke. I think it's going to continue to play this well. I think the Dolphins are legit. I really do. I was hyping up this Ravens defense all uh, season, all off season. I was hyping it up all week one after the great performance against the Jets. But, uh, you know, I, I still think that they're a good defense. I just think Miami's offense is better. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this wild game? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.